Hello and welcome back to Azales TV. Brace yourself for Unlucky 13 because it's time for another exciting episode of our electromechanical clock build. Let's get right into it. First up for this week is to add the veneer to this back plate. Now I previously added it when I added this top section here with the movement and so I drilled the holes for the movement here. But since then I've added all of this new stuff so I need to drill the holes for the screws holding all this down to go through into the veneer so first off is going to be to remove all of this and then take the base plate out of the frame and now this base plate Right, that's everything taken off of the base plate. Already we have a problem, because I've glued in these brass pillars which hold up the circuit board. So I can't remove these and lay the veneer flat, this cable notwithstanding. So I'm gonna have to measure across to these and drill the holes to fit around the pillars instead. Hopefully that'll be okay. Um, I'm gonna have to do the same for this cable anyway, but it's only gotta be as big as that. So hopefully that'll be alright. I'm going to take this out of this frame now and then I'll see what I can get doing. Right, in my long standing tradition of I wish I would have planned this better. Here's the empty base plate and here's the veneer to go on top of it. So I can't simply lay this down and push to work out where the screw holes need to be because none of this is exactly straight if I lay it down. So I'm going to have to measure it, but I can't mark on the veneer because this is going to be the final surface. Assuming this is going to be the veneer I'm going to keep because I might change it out later for a different colour or whatever else. So I'm going to have to measure it and I'm going to have to mark a whole position with masking tape over it and hope the masking tape itself doesn't leave any horrible marks on the veneer. So I need to... I think I'll measure this one first of all because that's right on the edge there and then measure these four drill them out and see if it lays flat hopefully wish me luck Now to get measuring. Okay, so that's that position marks for this plug here. I'm gonna cut that out, leaving room for this plug to fit through. Then I'll repeat the process for these four holes here and these four holes here for this. And then I can lay it flat and mark out the other holes here through the back. So this is how I've marked this out. I've taped all this, of course, and I've marked across the depths of these put a line here, done the same from here to here, put a line here, where they intersect, that's where I need to drill. I've done this one already, didn't have to be as precise for that because the um, hole which has a battery, it goes, it'll go over all of this so it will hide the hole, so that just slides through. It doesn't have to be especially accurate and that goes over there, so next I can drill the holes and they've got to be more accurate because nothing really to go over those to hide them as it were then when, they, when that's drilled out I can put that over there and drill these and 
let's make these a bit bigger and getting these for extra accuracy put this through hole these go over there and that all fits nice like that so next job is to drill through the back to mark out these holes and all the ones down here Now the other side. That's better. Now let's drill. Sweet. Here we go. Well, oh, that one's actually pretty close to that. I didn't even realise. Look at that. Right. Let's now screw this onto the base plate. Hopefully forever, but maybe not. That's why I'm screwing it, not gluing it. So everything lines up. That's brilliant. I've drilled the holes slightly oversized. Just in case I don't line up, for example, this one and these ones here, they're a little bit out. But they're still within the bounds of the holes I've drilled. And everything that goes over these holes is going to cover them completely anyway. So that's good. I've put washers in here just to give it a bit more strength because the wood behind it is a little bit thin because so I've had to drill it out for the screw head. Finally I managed to shoehorn the back plate in with the veneer on it because of course the veneer makes it thicker and it didn't quite fit in the bottom slot. In fact it didn't fit at all in the bottom slot I had to shave a bit off the slot. But it's still very, very tight, and the screws are making horrible squeaking noises as, as they went in because they're rubbing on the threads, and oh god, it's awful. But it all fits in nice. If I do decide to use this veneer and not change it out, I'm going to glue it on because at the moment it's a bit lumpy bumpy. But it doesn't really matter, you can't really notice it unless you push on it. But yeah, that looks good. It all fits, it all turns nice. Everything's at the same height, so it's all still as accurate as it was before. So next I'm going to be adding a bit of metal to here. Right, I'm going to have to remove this and lay this out on a bit of metal so I can trace around it and then drill that, that hole and then glue and screw on the top. So let's do that right now. Here's a better angle, should show the lighting quite a bit better. I'll try to adjust the colour balance and the temperature and the exposure and everything else to get it as close as possible to what I'm looking at now. So we'll see how that looks in post. I made a spinning top from VCR parts, but that's not what this video is about. Actually, I'm going to show you this. I've marked out the parts on this bit of metal where I'm going to cut to make the washer. It's going to go on the top, but it marks through this way, around like that. Drilled the hole. So next will be cutting out that with the jeweler saw. I've got these tiny screws here which I'm going to use to hold this down through this hole and there while it glues and I can drill more holes and put the screws through to give it extra strength and everything else. So let's do that next. Cut some bits out. So lots of sawing off camera and I have this little part. That goes on there like that. It's not particularly accurate, but I can sand it to shape. Did it off camera because otherwise it's just lots of me going. And that's not particularly exciting. So next job is to drill this and tap it to M3. Drill out lots of little holes to put these little screws in to hold it down and I can glue it in place. I'm also going to smooth the front and back sides of sandpaper to remove the paint. Hopefully it won't clag up the sandpaper like I did when I did these because it's smaller parts that so should be a bit better. We'll try it. Getting there. Right, let's move on to final grit. 400 grit. Wet and dry. Let's see what this looks like. Lovely. Right now I'm going to glue this onto here, leave that overnight to juke, and then I can drill through, put 
put some N2 screws through. Nuts on the back. Hold it all my right. hold it together nice and tight. I can screw through and I can put the crank on on top. I'm also going to glue together this side project. That's glued up overnight and I've drilled it already. I've filed the top smooth again. I've actually used a diamond lap file to get rid of the burrs and give it a nice shine. Don't know how well that comes up on cam. Done the back as well, so all that's left now is to do is put the screws in. Oh yes, so that's more screws than I'll ever need for this, but I think you can agree that looks pretty badass. Our next job is to put the screw and the nuts in there to hold the second crank arm. So the nut goes on top of that, the screw goes down through the crank arm into that nut and then into here, and the nut just tightens up. Sweet. So let's put this back on a clock and see how it fits together and how it all looks. It should all be nice and level with the crank arms going like that over one another. Let's give it a bow. Do you like the new work surface by the way? I forgot to mention that. Unless I've already mentioned it in which case I've forgotten that I've forgotten. Anyway. Here is what we came for. So that's higher up than that one so it should lay on top once I do this perfect and I'll screw that down lovely so now these servos move together to move this around like that You can see from that there's a, a delay between these two moving and that's the phase difference. So that one will move and then that one will. Then that will stop and then this will. And so on. Excellent. While I've got those tiny screws I'm going to glue and screw these servo horns onto these servo wheels, the crank wheels. Because I was originally going to do that quite a while ago and didn't. So with the screws tightened down and the glue set, I've put those wheels back on the servo. And everything looks very nice. It still all runs, of course, because it's just going into these servo arms here. And it's nice and strong now and it's all held down. Anyway, that is where I'm going to leave it for this week because we're getting into long video territory. And nobody wants that. So, tune in next Tuesday when I do something with these servos and actually get them programmed, hopefully. And subscribe so you keep up to date with everything and hit that notification button so you know when I put the video out. Because I put a video out every Tuesday but the timing is a little at the moment. I've got a lot going on so it's not at the same time every week. So be sure to stick around and come in next Tuesday. In the meantime, have a great week.